Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Thursday, March the 23rd. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal. For my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis, please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these daily market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your portfolios but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. Having that out of the way, let's get this on. A uh, little bit of economic data across the pond. Great Britain got retail sales coming in uh, a little higher than expected at 1.4%, was expected to be 0.4%. Uh, we also here in the United States got unemployment claims came in higher than expected at 258,000, expected to be 240,000. That could be a little bit higher than expected as people are expecting uh, the economy to be turning around and are starting to look for more uh, or getting back into the job scene. Uh, we also had Fed Governor Janet Yellen speaking earlier this morning, not really much coming out of there. Overall markets did react positively after she got done speaking though but uh, and then we had here in the United States new home sales come in at 592,000 units versus the expected 566,000 units and they also revised last month's number up to 558,000 units then we also got natural gas storage coming in at a big draw, uh, drawdown of 150 billion probably due to all of the uh, storms that we saw, some of the blizzards uh, across the uh, Midwest into the East Coast and even in uh, some of the uh, northern states here in the United States. Uh, that was expected, but just more, slightly more of a drawdown than expected, but it was expected to be 148,000. And then Kashikari speaking later on this afternoon for, uh, which is a Fed governor. And then um, we also got consumer confidence out of Europe which came in at negative five, which is better than the expected negative six. Anyway, onto the overall markets. We've got crude oil right now down on the day, down about 24 cents, but came down, tested this Fibonacci level of uh, 38.2. It's really acting uh, like a big uh, support level right now, which as it should for the most part, uh, I still expect it to come down here and test the point of control which uh, we need to get past this Fibonacci level. I also think with the, even the equities pushing a little bit higher today, uh, oil is going to kind of put a drag on the overall equity rally if it continues to slide the way I think it's going to. Then we got gold futures giving up basically all of yesterday's gains, still above the 200-day moving average by a pretty decent margin, but uh, gold futures down right now as the broader market in equities is up. Same uh, with the bonds, they're down on the day. 150.15 is where they're trading, down about 10 ticks, but still right there at the point of control, which for is for the volume, not necessarily the time, but where the most volume's been spent over the last uh, 52 weeks. And really most of that has been since December, so for the most part this year. Uh, but again, same thing with the equities up, you would expect gold and the bonds to be down. You wouldn't necessarily expect to see crude oil down, but we are seeing that. So I think it's going to put a little bit of a drag on the equities, although the charts for the equities actually look like they found a lot of support here and could continue higher. But I'm going to stay uh, away from getting really long. I'm going to wait maybe one more day to see how the market reacts tomorrow or going forward. Because uh, if crude oil continues to go down, like I said, I, I, I think this could be just, you know, a, a bit of a fake out to the upside or some shorts covering. But with the, that being said, we've got the Dow Jones up almost 67 points right now today. NASDAQ, same thing, up six, almost seven points on the day after yesterday's rally. Wasn't quite taking back half of it. So the NASDAQ's chart doesn't really look as good as like the Dow and uh, S&Ps and some of the other equity markets, but the NASDAQ uh, pushing a little bit higher today as well. The many S&Ps, this is what I was talking about. You know, normally this doji right here kind of would look like a, uh, 
a continuation pattern or just taking a breather in a, after a big down day and then maybe continue the slide, but we're not really seeing that. It came down there. The bulls really defended this area. They did not want it to go below uh, this area right here, which is where it found support, which is 2330. If it got much below that, I was looking for it to come down here and test this value or, or this this volume node, I should say, where some decent volume and price action have happened. So, uh, but the E-mini S&P is up almost 11 points right now. This is the 30 minute breakdown on a 20 day chart for the E-mini S&Ps. Uh, as you can see, after the economic data that we got up here in the United States, the market really did uh, start to blast off and the market never came down there and tested that overnight low. So, um, just to keep that in mind, that's still on the radar, if you will. Uh, on to a couple of things that I've done. Actually, this is the only thing I've done so far, but XRT, you know, I've, you've heard me talking about how the retailers were really getting beat up the other day on the downswing. Uh, this is what we saw here. Brokes outside of the value area, um, value area low for that matter. But this, you know, really looked like a bottom and I decided to add some long deltas to this. Uh, went down there and sold these 40 puts. So uh, I went out a little bit and sold the April uh, 40 puts for 33 cents. I actually started out trying to sell those at about 37 cents and had to uh, kind of chase it in a sense, but ended up getting into it at 33 cents. So I think I'm pretty safe with it being above this 40 level. So, uh, and you know, not that far out in time. So. Hopefully I can get a little bit of uh, volatility contraction. It's above 30 for a ETF. That's pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that one. All right, so check us out. Go to protraderstrategies.com. I'm gonna be talking about how we can put together some pairs trade, normally correlated uh, markets or underlines. And we're gonna try and figure out a way to put these together, I actually have a strategy that you guys can use. So uh, when you're unsure of what's the market direction is going to be or you think that one is kind of lagging the other on the downside or the other one you know one might come back in line we're going to show you different ways that you can take advantage of that type of situation to make some money all right so that's all i got for you guys if you can't take that take it easy